intro music. Man. And I wish I knew how to play the music, man. But all right, we're, we're, we're live now. Uh, happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Unpopular Opinion. I am your co-host, Mr. Said, along with my main man, Tim. And today we have two special guests, uh, Miss Adrian and uh, Chris Newberry. And I'm going to give Adrian and Chris a few seconds to uh, briefly introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about what you guys do. So, hey, I'm Adrian, uh, retired Air Force, I guess, like a lot of us, military. Um, Intel for 20 years, so enjoyed that. Decided to move back here to Cali, and now I'm here doing this. All right. My name's Chris. Uh, I just came here to Cali from New Mexico. From I came, I, I was in New Mexico from Okinawa. I'm in the Air Force. Uh, I have two sons and a wife. I'm in my 13th year, and I'm trying to push towards that 20 to be like Miss Adrian and get that retirement for sure. All right, all right. So we'll go ahead and start with the first uh, topic, which is toxic masculinity. So, um, you know, you know, like you guys' thoughts on it. Like, do you think it's a real thing? Um, do you think it, like, what type of effects does it actually have on society as a whole, or you know, things of that nature? So, um, Adrian, we'll start with you. What do you, what do you thought? What do you think? Uh, yeah. So it's definitely a real thing. Um, you know, I've got some personal experience and stories, probably like most people. But what I was looking at today is just kind of looking at some standard definitions. And when you look at our society, we're a typical patriarchal society. So, you know, males are at the top. And from there, they set all the rules, they set the norms. Uh, so when we look at toxic masculinity, it doesn't mean that all masculinity is bad, but there's an aspect to it that can be toxic. And that's when you're shaping this culture and it's having some negative outcomes, whether that's mental problems, whether that's people being able to express themselves and connect with that feminine side, um, a lot of that is having a lot of negative effects on our youth, especially our boys. And so that's kind of the perspective that I bring. Um, I have a 13 year old son, so definitely trying to raise him to be aware and not afraid of his feelings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of that, um, it's, it's important. There is toxic masculinity, but there's also toxic femininity, so. Okay. So let me just ask you this. So um, how would you define toxic masculinity? Like what traits are toxic? So I would say that the traits typically that you'll see that are toxic are, you know, we've all heard the terms man up or be a man. Those mm -hmm. things that define strength as only a masculine quality when we all know we come from both male and female. So females can be strong too. Uh, when we're denying boys the opportunity to, and men, the opportunity to express their feelings, thinking that being expressive with your emotions or crying is weak. So some, those are some of the traits that I see. Uh, being homophobic, being misogynistic, hating women, hating people who are gay, uh, making judgments. Uh, that comes from a toxic place of masculinity. Okay, okay. All right, Chris, what, do you, what are your thoughts? Uh, I definitely believe that Toxic masculinity is a thing. Uh, it's just like anything else. If you if you take too much vitamin C, it could be a bad thing. You know, it's uh, you know, everybody knows that. You know, or I wish people knew that if you're going to have something, you can't you can't. There can always be too much of a good thing. You know, yes, as a man, you have to go out. You have to go get a job. You have to take care of your kids and your responsibilities, you know, but when you take it to the point where, yeah, like, like Adrian was saying, you don't express yourself and then you, and you hold it in until you have like ulcers in your stomach or what have you and stuff. That's, that's toxic. If you're raising your son, not to be able to express himself, if you're telling him that wanting to dance is, is gay or, you know, or wanting to do, um, anything else that would be viewed as not masculine, you know, that's, that's toxic. You know, you can, you can damage kids that way. You know, what if, what if your son is artistic? What if, what if, he, what if he's not the type that wants to play football and he would rather be a photographer or something like that? You know, it's, 
you know, that that's that's how I feel. So it's definitely there can always be too much of a good thing. And masculinity isn't bad, but if you push it too far in one direction, it can be bad for sure. All right. All right. Say, what do you think? Man, they both touched on uh, some good points. And I, I think us as uh, men, I mean, I think a lot of it is inherited, right? Uh, you know, especially like someone myself who's older, uh, you know, my my parents' generation, you know, that stone cold, you know, like you're saying, man up, don't cry. And, you know, I have a son and two daughters. So, you know, I, inf- I, I say, or I did say a lot of those things to my son before, like, you know, what do we say? Hey, boys don't cry, right? Um, it, certain things like, hey, you can't, you can't wear that, you know, that color or, you know, just the certain psyche or mindset, you know, I wrestled in, in college. So, you know, I'm like, Hey, my son needs to, you know, wrestle or he needs to do one of those sports. And he's like, no dad, I want to play band. And I'm like, you know, at first I'm like, what? But, but, you know, but I was like, okay, everybody has their own path. And like Adrian said too, is you, you should be secure, you know, as a man and it shouldn't be homophobic. You shouldn't be uncomfortable, you know, around, someone who is, you know, different, you know, than yourself. But, um, you know, we've been dealing with it. It's funny. So one of my friends actually messaged me this and she's like, yeah, another example is, you know, same thing that Adrian said, you know, men, men can't wear pink or, you know, a man being homophobic. And, you know, she's saying that that's basically, you know, their, their insecurities, you know, within ourselves. It, it, um, just, uh, the other day, uh, I was talking to my boy, um, Alan and Alan's 38 and he's a, he's a retired cop and we're both on the phone. Literally. I think this was probably on Sunday and we're crying. We're two grown men crying because I started, um, expressing, cause you know, I do suffer from some PTSD, uh, from some things that I've seen, you know, my law enforcement. And, you know, I was talking about one example specifically where I started, unfortunately saw, you know, a six-year-old boy and a two-year-old girl stabbed probably like 60 times. Hmm. And it's the worst thing that I've ever experienced in my life. And I've never been able to get past it. So I'm, you know, I'm talking about that to him and he starts tearing up. I mean, we're both on the phone on opposite sides and we're crying and you realize that it's okay. You know, like, uh, like Chris was saying, that's, that's actually healthy for us as men to release that because when we hold all that stuff in, we become more violent and, you know, it, it's unhealthy for us. So. Okay. Okay. See, it's interesting. Cause um, when I, I looked up the definition or not definition, but how it's kind of like uh, what characteristics are kind of considered uh, toxic masculinity. So I agree with what you guys were pointing out. Um, but some of the ones that were kind of uh, identified were like things like risk taking um, violence, dominance, um, trying to be uh, emotionally in control, um, desire to win or pursuit of social status. So I feel like those characteristics are okay. You know, I don't think that those are toxic, but things like you guys have pointed out, like, you know, maybe not being able to uh, to cry if you need to um, or uh, the homophobic thing. So now do you think that if a guy decides that he doesn't want to be around gay people. Not that he doesn't like gay people, but he just doesn't want to be around them. Is that considered, do you guys consider that homophobic or do you just consider that a preference? Uh, I'll go with you. I have to say it depends on what place that's coming from. So if it's coming from a place of, oh, I don't want them liking me. Well, who says you're that desirable? (laughs) You know, (laughs) it's such a common, (laughs) you know, so that's, that's, that's something separate. That person probably needs some some counseling, some therapy mm-hmm. to kind of get past some of those internal um, feelings. But if it's just a personal choice, hey, religious reasons, whatever, you don't agree with it, fine, great, whatever. But yeah. if it's a fear and if it's you think you're gonna catch something, then that's toxic. Okay, okay. So as long as it's as long as it's not a fear. So if it's like religious, you brought up a good point. So let's say your your religious views, you know, don't align with homosexuality. So you decide to you know, uh, separate yourself, ostracize yourself from individuals who practice that. 
you know, that's that's acceptable, right? Like we don't see that you guys. See I mean, that it's as- acceptable for them, not okay. I mean, for me personally. No, I don't agree with it, but okay. because you don't know who's, what are you gonna do? Check everybody that you come in uh, contact with. I think you that can't. one's. I think that one's tough, yeah. Tim. When you bring up religion, because people people from different religions don't talk to each other just because they have different theological beliefs, which is kind of crazy in a way. Like you say, well, okay, I'm Jewish, you're Baptist, whatever that we all can't be cool because we believe in something a little different. And people, obviously there have been wars and and millions of people who've been killed over people's religious beliefs. So that one I think is, that one's tough. You know, that okay. I, me personally, I have certain beliefs, but I can hang out with anybody just because I'm extremely comfortable. And like Adrian just said, just because someone has a same sex preference or whatnot doesn't mean they like they they you know they want your ass. So you know, right. like who, why you think you all that, right? Like you said, so, right. yeah. It's it's definitely it's definitely uh, if it's coming from a place of fear, mm-hmm. then, then then that's to that's wrong. Like like you know to me like if it's coming from a place of fear, it's like you know what if you you drink a beer with a gay man and stuff, then, then that means that you're going to be gay too. No, no, you know, it's, it's like, you know, come on. Like, you know, I have relatives who are gay as the day is long, you know, and that doesn't make, that doesn't point, that doesn't speak to who I am as a person. All it means is that that's a choice that they made. If we're going to hang out, then we're together. If anybody comes with them wrong, then they're going to have to deal with me and I'm not going to be, uncomfortable in, in stating that because you know some people some folks don't want to stand up when they see people messing with gay people because they think that oh well then they're, they're going to think that i'm gay and mm-hmm. stuff you know and i'm like you know no that just means you're a, a decent human being you know that that's if you if you govern your behavior from that standpoint based off of fear based on the fact that you think it's going to rub off on you that's when it becomes a problem Right. Hey, 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 Tim. So, oh, my bad. But I was going to bring up this question that Brandon brought up. Do you think there are roles that are gender uh, specific? And if so, or if not, uh, do you think that that's kind of toxic if you uh, if you look at certain roles as being only for men and only for women? Hey, uh, that kind of goes into what we were talking about a little last week, right, Adrian? About uh, you know men, certain things that you know me. You know, I went off on that, right? I think that there are certain things that. Um, you know, men are supposed to do. And you remember Tim in the dialogue we were having last week about the man, you know, paying and things like that. Mm -hmm. I guess how things are done is what can make it toxic. I think one of the things you read, did you, I think was part something you said something about controlling or being dominant. Yeah. Like was that one of the traits dominance or emotional control. So I think those two can be, um, very, very, um, bad. Right. If you look at if a man feels like no matter if, say, for example, Adrian and I are dating and I'm like, well, well wait a minute. Hey, she's got to she may have a say, but no, no, no. No matter what, I'm always making the final choice because I'm the man and the man's supposed to be the head of the household and this and that. That's mm-hmm. where that stuff can be, uh, I believe, toxic. Do you would view that as toxic because I mean that I think that uh, that premise kind of comes from a religious standpoint where. Well, you- well, well, <laughs> Well, it does, but I, I I agree with it. But you, yeah. you and I, like I said, you know, we've had some discussions about theology, right? Like I told you, right. that's something I, I study. And a lot of people get mad at me because I don't get a lot. I'm, like I said, I'm more facts driven than emotional. And doesn't mean that it's right. But you're right. It comes from that premise that um, men, we're up here and women are here. And I mean, and you look at even some of like the Middle Eastern cultures, right? that mm-hmm. <laughs> it can't talk, things like that. So to me, yeah. I think that that is a toxic. Gotcha. So Chris, what do you think? Do you think there are roles that are specific for men and roles that are specific for women? And maybe those roles should never cross? Or do you think that that's something that should be you know done away with? Um, I don't believe in gender specific, specificity. I don't gen- believe in gender specifics. I only think that if you're, <laughs> forgive me, <laughs> you know, I think that you should be will- willing to do whatever, you know, I'm just as willing to wash clothes 
as my wife is. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just as willing to change diapers as she is. You know, let me ask you, let me ask you this, Chris, real quick. If are you okay with your wife out mowing the lawn? Because if I came home and my daughter was mowing the lawn and my son's in here, I'm gonna have a problem. <laughs> I, now, once again, it's it's different when it's volunteered behavior. Like if she's just like, no, I feel like mowing the lawn, and fine, you know. If if, if she's gonna, if she's saying, I want to mow the lawn, that's what I feel like doing. I'm not gonna step up and say. No, I'm the man. I'm mowing the lawn. You get back inside. You don't know what you're doing because so she another, might be better another, than I am. Another question, <laughs> and, and this is something I brought up last week. I, do you do you have a daughter? No, I have two boys. Okay. okay, so if you had a daughter, and your daughter was in her twenties, right? Okay. And her and a guy, or they go out to eat, whatever it might be, and your daughter's at the gas station, and she's pumping the gas, and dude's sitting in a car. You okay with that? See, I'd have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not perfect. I'll watch it, but that would be me judging the situation before I knew what it was, right? You know, you we don't know what the situation might be. He might be searching on the deck on bottom of the car <laughs> looking for something, and she said, "I'm gonna hurry up and go get gas." You know, like, like. But that being said, I would hope that that man would be like, hey, you know, listen, I'm taking you out on a date. I'm a gentleman. Let me pump the gas. You know, it's as simple as that. You know, it's just like holding the door. I've had, I remember one time a girl got mad at me because I held the door open for her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey, it's, I'm, this is, I'm that's the new, gentleman. trust me, yeah. I went off about yeah. that last week. That's the new uh -huh. thing going around. And if What's you that, for dinners and open it. doors, you get yelled at. Let's let, uh, let okay. Adrian jump in real quick and see what she thinks about uh, roles specific for, for uh, gender. So I have two daughters and a boy, so like Cedric. Uh, but here's the thing. If it's the daughter's car, and if you want your daughter to have a home someday, then she needs to learn how to mow the lawn. She needs to learn how to mow, to pump her own gas. and we were talking about it last week. If she's the one who asked him out on the date and it's her car, why can't she pump her own gas? Now I understand if you have personal preferences, but if you're expecting that everybody should adapt your personal preferences, that's toxic. Yeah, I think I agree with that too. I think, um, you know, I think there are certain roles that, you know, certain genders are, are better at, you know, like if you're doing heavy right. lifting or something like that, I would say, Men are just with biologically and you know just we're just built for that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Men are naturally mm -hmm. stronger than than women are, um, and I think women are more nurturing than men are. You know, so um, so I think a, a woman would be better with the child. You know, as far as like giving it, you know, that emotional aspect, you know, uh, of care and stuff like that. And the man is going to be more stern. <laughs> You know, I'm not no. saying I'm not saying 100. percent ready. I'm just saying that. <laughs> you see my face, Adrian, on that. Even, yeah. Even things like even things like like nursing, right? Like, I think that uh, women make better nurses because they're more empathetic. They're more emotionally uh, able to connect with the patient as opposed to men. I think that's why more, more women tend to go into that field, and men tend tend to go into more like. Um, uh, you know, mathematics or, or you know, um, STEM fields, you know, like engineering, architecture, things of that nature. I think it just has to do with the way our, our minds are kind of wired. But go ahead. I'll let you guys respond. I don't know who wants to jump in it. Um, I will say this. I think that Somebody I, know, <laughs> I, know in my, I know in my household, I know in my household, my wife is more, um, she's more detail oriented. When it comes to certain things, like you know, say our diet or what have you, our, our diet and the way that we, the products that we use, the clean things like that, because I don't care. Let's go, go get Mister Clean. Go get this. Let's wipe the floors down. We'll be all right and stuff. Whereas she's more concerned about whether or not the products that we're using are uh, hypoallergenic or organic or what have you, um, and. I don't see the importance in that, and I think that's more more so of a of a man's mind state because we just want to get the job done. But it's with with her, it's more so how we're getting the job done and how it's and if it's being done to its best 
uh, rates or what have you with the least amount of by byproducts because of it. You know, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I think women can be. Um, I always say women make great detectives because they are detail oriented. But I think it's subjective because if you know if you walked in and you looked in my closet, you'd be like, okay, well. So I, I think it's, it's case by case. The reason why I started I was laughing a little bit when you were saying that, Adrian, is because um, I was having a discussion with uh, a friend of mine who uh, lives up in Barstow, and we were actually talking about our kids, and it just rubbed me wrong because she goes, "Well, you know, there's nothing like a, a, a mother's love. Like a man, a man can't love his kids like a woman." I was like, "Oh, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute." Aww. Because yeah, how, that's how do you, you know, how do you, you, how do you measure, you can't measure that. And so I'm like, you know, how, how can you say that? She goes, well, you guys don't carry the child. And that's so that's mask That's that femininity on the other side. And I go, yeah, I, I understand that. But I could also show you quite a few women who aren't good or, or, or aren't good parents. So mm -hmm. I said, you, there, I know a lot of men. You know, all my male friends love their kids. You know, I, I'm sure that you guys do too, you know? So I, I think mm -hmm. that that's another one of those role things that, oh, you know, yeah, man, you can, you can never understand because, you know, we had it. That, no, you know, I love just as hard as, as a woman, man. I love these kids in here to death. But I think it's <laughs> different, man. I think, and I'll let Adrian, I know she wants to jump in, so... All I'm gonna say real quick is I just think it is different. I don't I don't think a woman could ever love a, a child the way a man will love a child. Just like I don't think a man can love a child the way a, a, a woman can, you know. So that's why I think you have to have the mother and the father. You can't you can't have one who plays both roles. And I, I agree, but you but you agree one's not higher than the other. So it's like I have three no, 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 kids. No, no, both no, of no, us no, have no. multiple kids, right? We yeah. we always say that we love our kids all the same, but we love them differently. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I'm not saying one's better than the other. I think they're both needed. I think it's just it's different. Like Hank saying, I think it's different. You it's, know? it's a balance. Yeah. yeah exactly. So I want to go back to what Tim was saying about the, the roles, the gender roles. Uh, that's a great question that Brandon brought up. And Tim's like, well, you know, men are more, you know, go towards the STEM fields. But part of that, you got to remember, we're in a patriarchal society. Men set up the roles and they set up the rules. So they prevented women from going into those jobs. And when you compare, you can see in grade school that actually girls do a lot better in the STEM fields. And they start to lose interest by the time they get to middle school because they're not being invested in as heavily as boys are. So that's just another result of toxic masculinity that's not really... You can't see it on the surface unless you're there and you're dealing with it and you've got experience with it. So now so when Adrian, you, me, you say that sorry, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say so now when you say that that um girls aren't as invested into the STEM fields, because you know, I've I have heard that uh that women, you know, or girls do better, you know, in grade school than, than boys do up to a certain certain point, right? But um so now when you say they're not as invested in, what do you mean by that? Like how, how so do you I, think? I mean, as far as the teachers and the parents and society investing in them, it's starting to change now. That's why we've got the STEM push in elementary schools and um, junior high and in um, high school, but it's been pushed now because they've seen women aren't entering these fields because mm -hmm. no one was pushing them. And because there were these very real ceilings that were put in place so that women couldn't go into those fields. So do you think that there is an interest in for women? Um, Absolutely. To, okay, Absolutely. okay. Just looking at my own family. So I said, I, I have a 13 year old boy and then mm -hmm. I have a nine year old and a seven year old daughter. My seven year old, man, she'll be the first person to try to put something together. So for Christmas, I got her a tool set. Yeah. And my son doesn't have a tool set because that's not his interest. He's a gamer. So yeah. he's- Well, I mean, as far as like adult age, do you think that a like full, like full grown women, do you think that they're still as interested as going into the STEM fields? As Absolutely. Really? Okay, okay. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I have <laughs> numerous friends who that's their job in the Air Force. They mm -hmm. are computer science, like that's their job. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, okay. There, there were a couple of, uh, on the <laughs> police department and stuff, one of our main uh, IT people, I mean, she was a female, she was sharp too. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, she actually stopped that and tried to become a cop and, you know, things just didn't work out for her. Um, but Adrian, I want to ask you, you know, being a military vet too, when we talk about like gender specific roles, um, cause I have friends like I, you know, one that Tim and I both know, he does not, you know, he's not too crazy. He doesn't really think women should be cops or 
women should be in combat. You know, a, a man, men seeing women with their guts blown all out on the battlefield or something, you know, like that. I don't know if that's something, uh, you know, we have three men on the panel. I, I, you know, I don't know if I'd be okay with that. So I, I guess we all, well, me, you know, we all have that toxic masculinity built into us a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Because I can be honest with you and say, I, I actually don't have any issues with female, female police officers, because I'll agree with Tim. I think there are some situations that women can deal with much better. And I, I would tell some of my partners, I say, hey, you know what, go talk to him, because I'm, I'm going to wind up fighting him because of the, the, the <laughs> testosterone. Seriously, I'd be like, hey, mm -hmm. Go, go talk to him because he and I are going to end up fighting. So I agree. There are some things you guys do way better than we do. But I, you know, certain things I kind of, man, I don't know if I want to see you guys in combat and things like that. So, what, what, you know, what's your opinion on that? Yeah. So really, it's not really a question about what the men want to see. It's about what's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <I love> it. <laughs> so the right thing to do is if somebody has the strength, They've passed the test. They've gone through all those same things that the men have done. Why shouldn't they be given the opportunity to do that same job? Because men are sensitive. I'm going to open up a can right there. So I got, I'm going to tread water very carefully, like I said. Because, no, so, don't, man. You got to be, you gotta be uh, honest. Let's have it. Let's so Adrian, when you said that, you do know when you say the same thing that men's do, that the, 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 test, the testing's not the same, right? That... That, that there is, and I'm going to use the word that they said, and I think we've all seen G.I. Jane when he says gender norming, mm -hmm. that there is that, right? So some devil's advocate would say, hey, you know, I agree with you 100% if it's status quo. If, if the man's got to do uh, 50 push-ups and the woman should do 50 push-ups and 10 pull-ups or whatever. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, but that, what's that based on? Is that based on what they need to be able to do in combat, or is that just some arbitrary number somebody came up with because it was all men and they never really had to think about it? Well, so when you look at, um, you know, like the Air Force PT test, right? There's a there's a vast difference in the standards for the same age group, right? So you know, a woman can run a mile and a half, and she gets what like 18 minutes in her 20s. So while a man has to run it in 11 or like 12 minutes, I think we get 12 minutes 30 seconds. So, and even just the amount of push-ups, it's almost double. The amount of sit-ups is almost double. Um, so I think if the argument is that, you know, men and women are, are physically the same, physically equal, which I, I don't think we're saying that. Are we, we're not saying that. No, right? no, okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So then, okay, well, then if that's the case, then I, then I can understand the difference. I think we, we acknowledge that physically, you know, men are stronger physically right uh, and that's why i just use the whole thing as, but, as for the military because i believe that women can do i mean out here you know I, I i've seen you know female firefighters and stuff and trust me that gear is not light i'm like hey, hey sister god bless you, <laughs> you know, so so, i think when we're looking at combat i think it's the same principle applies i, I think uh the abilities of a man in combat are going to be vastly different than the abilities of a female in combat so if I we're mean, just basing that on muscular strength and bone density, sure. But there's a lot more that goes into that. Well, yeah, that even stamina, stamina. I mean, just the whole gambit. I, I think the whole gambit, I think it's going to be more geared towards men, unless it's unless it's something like I hate to throw nursing in there. But I mean, I think nursing for sure, women would dominate that field. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a great thing. I mean, why like, is that? Hey, Adrian's like, like, what? what? <laughs> I think well, because first of, I mean, you have to be really smart to be a nurse, right? I think that you know, so um, there's a lot you have to 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 remember, and then also just the nurturing aspect of majority of women. I would say I'm not going to say all, but I, I don't know. I, I think there is a difference. Chris, you haven't said anything in a while. What you got? I I just think that if if the woman is able to do what the man is able to do. You know, if if we have a woman out there that can snipe people from 500 square feet, hit you right in your eyes, and, and by all means, you know, give her a rifle, send her out in, into mm. the dirt, and come home with with your ten scalps or whatever. You know, if 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 that's the case, then fine. But that being the case, you will be held to that standard, and to me, I think that that's fair. You know, you you can't turn around and say, well. She can't do that. She's a girl. No, no. If that's what she wants to do. Mm -hmm. 
then she needs to be able to do it and she needs to work towards it. Like G.I. Jane, you know what I mean? She, she worked and she earned her spot, you know, period, you know? So I think, I think that anybody should be allowed to get their chance. And if they can do it, go right ahead, you know, you, by all means. But if you can't, then we're not gonna lower the standard just to serve you, you know? And that being the case, like Adrian said, it ain't gonna hurt my feelings if I see a woman out there that can run faster and lift more and, and, and carry somebody who's wounded out of a situation. She's saving lives. She's yeah. defending my freedom. You know what I mean? So that that's what's important. And if she can do it, then she can do it. You know, <laughs> that, that's it. Okay, so oh, Brandon brought up a good point. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Adrian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Just real quick, I think we should also reframe our thinking on when we say lowering the standards. There's no lowering of the standards. The men set the standards. So women were never really included in that conversation when those standards were set to begin with because we weren't allowed to do those jobs. So maybe there's a different standard that now needs to be set that encompasses a wide range of abilities that like are still that. necessary to do the job. Uh, excellent. Um, yeah. Brandon's question, I think, is crazy. I think that's crazy. Uh, competing against each other in sports. I just, I mean, I don't even know how to answer that. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. I know, I know that for a while um, when we were younger in wrestling, right? I think wrestling is actually one of the first sports that really started incorporating where men and women were competing against each other. And it, the guys always yelled and booed when they went out there and rolled up the, the, the females. Like it was almost like, okay, you, you're going out here and you're wrestling a, a, a girl and I can't let her beat me because my homeboys are going to laugh. And then when I roll her up, everybody's like, oh man, why'd you do her that way? So I yeah. just think, I think when it comes to competition, I don't mean to sound disrespectful, but no way. I mean, it, it, it just, and Adrian, I don't mean to say, if you just look at <laughs> it, it, um, it's not even competitive. If you look at track and field and you look at the fastest men time, and the fastest women's times, I mean, they're not even competitive. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe it depends on the sport. I'm, I'm not a fan of every single sport, men and women should be able to compete against each other because we already talked about, there is a definite difference in physiology, mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean all sports. Why do we Why do we say blanket no, no sports? There's plenty of sports that women and men can be able to compete against each other in. Like, like, you like what? You say, yeah, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your I know. Oh, no, no, no. You, you, no you're I don't know. Why you put it on flat? You didn't think we were just going to let that slide, did you? Tennis. Oh. Tennis. So uh, Hank brings up I'll a very interesting point. Did, too. Did you didn't make oh. double tennis. I'll say maybe tennis, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe shooting pool, you know, bowling. I knew I knew some girls that were nice as far as uh, bowling, whatever. So bowling 300s, killing you. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I wouldn't, like, as far as like something like say basketball, like at, once you get to a certain area, once you get past the um, skills situation, like just the, the physiology of it, you know, if, if, if you ask a 250 pound man to post up a girl that weighs 180, you know, like, like they're gonna be at a disadvantage unless it's just, it's just, reality you know is i would say that it would have to be a sport where we won't have an advantage where we can be more physical i'm gonna give you guys an example um when i was stationed in northern california um Sta the university you know stanford university is probably about 10 minutes from the base so uh it was during the it was one year during the ncaa uh, women's basketball tournament and some of the girls came over to the base and were playing with us, right? I mean, they're, they are division one female basketball, you know, players. And skill wise, I mean, I'm not a basketball player, I'm a wrestler, you know, I'm an athlete, but just physically and the things that it just was, even though these women are division one basketball players, it was still a little difficult for them. And yeah. I'm just an average Joe. So I'm saying, I think it would have to be a sport where we can't use our our strength and things like that right. to an advantage. 
So, all right. So going off of the, the, the physical aspect of it, what about um, wage gap? Do you think there's actually a wage gap or do you think that that's a myth? Do you think? It's yeah. Go, go ahead, Adrian. Go ahead, Adrian. Go ahead, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't even. Yes. That, that's the answer to the question. I mean, there, there's plenty of data that shows that men make more money than women doing the very same job. Um, so yeah, that needs, that definitely needs to be fixed. But again, who set, you know, the pay system in place. So the more that we have women executives and women in these positions to make these decisions, the more that stuff hopefully will change over time. Do you think but it shouldn't take starting, a woman being in that do position. Think, do you think it's starting to change more and more? I mean, like my last department that I worked for, we actually had a, up in Northern California, we had a female sheriff and, you know, that was my first experience working you know for a woman who was over everything and i actually think how she ran the sheriff's department up there was actually pretty good yeah it's starting to change a little too slowly for for my taste probably a lot of females um and any men who has who has a daughter um but it's changing culture you know sometimes it takes longer than we would like to to make some of those changes but i'll give you a good example we had a chief a former chief master sergeant in the air force once come talk to a class that i was in and I asked him, I said, why do you think we've never had a chief master sergeant of the Air Force as a female? And his answer to me was the same reason we've never had one that's black. And after I got off over the initial shock and he continued to say what he wanted to say, he said, well, we don't pick leaders based on their gender, just like we don't pick, pick leaders based on their race. But I'm sitting here. So in 75 plus years, there's never been a woman who qualified for that position. No, that's not the reason why we haven't. It's because men have been in those positions and those are the ones making those decisions about who will fill that position next. So now I would ask, especially about the um, the chief position, because how many, what percentage of the Air Force uh, are women? You know, I think it's a, it's a pretty small percentage. And then you'd have to look at like what percentage of the Air Force are black women, right? And so I think yeah. when you just look at the probability, I think it kind of, you know, makes it tough. It's like, all right, well, <clears throat> You're, you're picking from a very small amount of people and assuming that, and how many of them stay in, you know, 20 years? How many of them actually? I know a lot of female chiefs. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So there are a lot of, <laughs> okay, all right. So. All right. They're out um, there. Yeah. Um, and so now with the uh, the pay gap, so now, um, of course, I gotta play devil's advocate. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Thomas Sowell. He's a famous economist, um, a black guy, famous com economist, but, he was saying that the pay gap is actually he's saying that he's, he's basically debunking it. And he was basically saying that the reason why uh, it's not really an accurate measure is because um, women tend to come out of the workforce once they have children. Right. Um, men tend to devote more time as far as like hours putting into uh, the job and also the different fields that that men and women tend to go into since men tend to go into higher paying fields and women tend to go into uh, lower paying fields, you know, just one's going into more of the STEM fields and then others are going into the um, the non-STEM fields. So how do you, what do you think about that? Do you think that that's, a, that's an adequate, uh, um, I guess, adjustment? Or would you say that it's still, there's still the discrepancy of pay? Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, do, I do think that that's, that's nonsense because there, there are women that want to do I knew I've had plenty of friends who were just as great a go-getters as the next man. But the fact of the matter is, like it's been said multiple times here, you know, certain people who are in place may not want to see that. Hmm. Or, you know, and any excuse that they can use, you know, oh well, well, she just had kids. Oh well, you know, um, I don't know if she can be strict enough. I don't know if the people will respect her enough. Like the, the same types of excuses that that wouldn't fly if, if it were a man in that same position. You know, like uh, I remember when I had my second son and people were questioning whether or not I was gonna take my uh, paternal leave to be with my son. And so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. You know, why? Why is that even a question? You know, and you know, unfortunately, there were some people who were like, "Well, you know, I didn't, I didn't take that time off. I went and saw my wife give birth. I, I was back to work that next week." And I'm like, you know, you, 
I'm thinking your, your wife let you do that. Like, like I'd probably be divorced <laughs> if, it, if, I did, if I did that to mine, you know. And, uh, but it is sort of an expectation. And some people just just see those things and they and it's it's any excuse, any excuse that they can use that would seem plausible, they're gonna use it, you know. But like we said, it's getting closer to the point where you can't use that anymore because you have women who are choosing not to have children. You have women who um after six weeks, once they're all healed up, they put their children in daycare and they're like, hey, you know, I gotta get back to it, you know, and it's as simple as that. You know, so that it's slow, you know, and we don't we don't live in a utopia. We don't live in a perfect society. There are going to be walls that either need to be doors that either need to be open or walls that need to be broken down with a sledgehammer. But one way or the other, it has to change, you know, and I think it's changing slowly, you know, and there will have to be more work to be done. But, you know, you can't make excuses for it. You have to see it for what it is, you know, and gotcha. that's just the truth. Yeah. And then, Tim, about the study that you're mentioning, I mean, this one guy is defining hours put in as the value of a worker, and that doesn't correlate to every job. It doesn't necessarily mean that the more hours you're working, the more productive you are. So in order for things to change, people have to start realizing that, one, if a woman does decide to have a child and still be a part of the workforce, she can still be just as productive as any man. And on that same boat, who says the woman has to be the one who's taking care of the kids and who's the primary responsibility for doing that? No, mm-hmm. there are two parents sometimes, you know, most of the times in those situations. In most families, the male should have just as much responsibility as the woman, but because of toxic masculinity, we've defined those gender roles and we've said the woman is the one who's gonna be the nurturer. The woman's gonna be the one who takes time off to go take the kids for their shots. The woman's gonna be the one who takes time off if the kids get sick. No, I mean, I'm not married now, but when I was, that was both of our responsibilities. I'm not going to be the only one taken off just because the kids need their shots. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think um, uh, what he was talking about is just like they leave the workforce. So they'll have kids and then they won't come back to the workforce. But I definitely agree with what you're saying. Um, Said, did you want to say anything on that before we go to the next time? No, no, I'm with her 100 uh, percent with with my ex. I mean, if there were times I mean, I I, like, no, you know what, I'll, I'll I'm going to take the day off and take the kids to their doctor's appointments, the dentist and, and those things. And you, you know, you go to work, I'll, I'll do that type of stuff. I agree with her a hundred percent. You got to split those. So. All right. So now the next topic is going to be toxic femininity. So is that a thing, you know, we'll, we'll scrutinize it the same way. So we'll go ahead and start with you, Adrian. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> you put me on the spot first. Yeah. What so, so is the thing? And it, w- when I first heard the term, I was like, eh, is it just females who were jumping on the toxic masculinity boat? But the more I started researching into it and reading about it, um, it is a thing. And what it tends to be is women who kind of put these gender roles on themselves and other women, the tendency to be perfect. Basically, that 1950s step wife who always has to have the makeup on who, you know, she goes on a date, all she's going to eat is a salad, the Mm. one who has to be perfect and take on all those roles, all those responsibilities, that's uh, female toxicity right there. And expecting that every other woman is going to do the same thing. Mm. All right, Chris, what do you think? Definitely. Definitely. I've witnessed it. You know, I I think we've all witnessed it. But I mean, when you when you live in a when you're the only boy in a house with uh, your grandmother, both your aunts, your mother, their daughter, and then it's just it's different. It's different, you know. And and that and you're gonna see certain things that feed into a toxic mind state, you know. Uh, you see reasons why some of those women are, are still alone. You you see why. You know, you, you just see that you see that toxicity, you know, yeah, no, you're not going to be perfect, you know, but at the same time, if it's always, you know, I can raise my kid by myself. I'm not going to let his father come see him 
when he wants to see him and all this other stuff like he, like that's that's just as toxic you're creating problems for for no reason other than you're trying to shine in front of your your family or your friends and stuff you know like you know i'm 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 strong you know so i don't need him but mm-hmm. but but your son needs him your daughter needs him you know like that's that's just as toxic that's just yeah. as that's just as lethal as any as anything else you know it's just like femininity again is a good thing but having too much of a good thing can be extremely bad yeah period and said i don't know if you want to add anything to it i think uh it just kind of piggybacks off of what we just finished talking about just the other gender right <laughs> yeah. i mean really so. so all right so then let me ask you this then so if a woman comes up and puts her hands on a man right let's say she punches him she does whatever does the man have the right to defend himself are you asking me what the law says because i'm going to tell you i I, if you if if you would if you see the look on some of the faces of women that i took to jail because Mm -hmm. they thought oh i could hit him Mm -hmm. and you know because he pushed her on the bed or whatever that she, you know, she wasn't going to jail because domestic violence laws are actually whoever the, the, the primary aggressor is. Okay. So everybody has the right, no matter if you think it's right or wrong, because the guy is a lot larger or whatever to to defend themselves. So yeah, I, it, and it's funny too, because it is, and I don't want to say all women's mind, but I think quite a few that because it's a man, I can pop him or whatever, and then I'm going to call the police. And when, mm-hmm. uh, Popo, when Popo said showed up and, and be like, turn, you know, put your hands behind your back. They're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, you're taking me to jail? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> when, uh, oh, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. You remember when uh, Chris Chris Rock had a park <laughs> race in it, <laughs> where he was like, you know, the girl, the woman will be out on a date and she'll be showing out on the man, and she'll. Go crazy, be smacking him, spitting on him, and all this other stuff. And then, and then she <laughs> picks it up to see if he's going to do anything. And when he doesn't do anything, that's when she really opens up. You know, I've, I've seen that multiple times, and that's very toxic. You yeah. know, and and then and then when it's time for, when the police come, and she's the one that gets arrested, she can't believe it. You know, what did I do? He shouldn't have said that to me. What do you mean he shouldn't have said that to you? You shouldn't have put his hands on you, him. And you're lucky that he didn't grab you. You know, like when Chris Rock was saying, I won't hit a woman, but I'll I'll shake the shit out of her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he was dead serious to me. That, that's real. You know, I, like I won't hit her, but best believe if I... I'm going to get you down. You're not going to hit me again. You know, that that's the truth. I'm going to get you down. I'm going to have my knee in your back. And, you're, and it's going to be waiting until somebody comes to take you away. You know, if they have a problem with that, then, then we just going, we both just going to jail because I'm telling them what's happened, what happened. And that's, you know. I, I agree with Courtney just said. I, I, I can't tell you in my 15 years how many times I tell people, I said, listen, just just keep your hands off of each other. You're both right. grown ups, grown ups. Just keep men keep your hands off of women, women keep your hands off of men. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's Use how it's supposed words. to work, right? <laughs> that's Courtney. That's my girl. Yeah. <laughs> I like that last name, Justice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, then what about uh, in the justice system? Um, as far as, let's say, divorce, right? It seems like the justice system tends to favor females in, uh, in, in divorce. You know, they tend to get half of whatever the man has normally if the man is the provider. Um, so what do you guys think about that? Do you think that's toxic? Do you think that should be changed? So my defense to women would be kind of like, well, it, it's going to piggyback off what Adrian said. The man, men reestablished the system, the system, right? How mm-hmm. we make more money than, than women and a man's supposed to go to work and a woman stays home and all that. And now, and when it comes to court, it kind of backfires on us. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shoot you right in the foot. Yeah. And it depends on the state too. So some states are a little bit more fair about it. They look at both incomes and they try to split it up based on what both people were bringing to the table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you can't expect to not have to continue providing if you were providing that whole time and you didn't give her the option to go get her education or to go establish a career or whatever, you know, that 
and at that point, then you're you're wrong, and that's and that's what got you, you know. I I agree. I think that a woman. You shouldn't break a man, but a man should be more than willing to provide for his kids and all that. And I'll go on mm-hmm. record and say a man who is not doing that, he's a coward. I yeah. mean, just really, I, I, I just don't understand how you're upset. You, for one, I think that if you are civil anyway, you should be able to talk with your ex and say, hey, this is how we're going to do it. Because really, it's not about us. It's about our children and their future. But if you let it go to the judge and all that, I mean, don't don't get butt hurt, you know, about it. Do do what you're supposed to do. I always say this too, and I don't want to get too much off the of topic. That men, like, because you know, being single, like women, why? Well, you know, do you have a, you know, a crazy ex-wife or a crazy baby mom? I said there's only there's usually two women, and I'm not, this is an absolute, but there's only usually two reasons why women trip out. Either they still want to be with you. Or you're not taking care of your shit as a father. <laughs> that's, that's why they get on you. You're not, you're not taking care of your I don't know. I think, I think some, some see it as an opportunity, man. I think there are younger women who will marry rich guys knowing that, you know, okay, if I divorce this guy, I'm going to be entitled to half of his, his belongings. Let's say there's no children involved, right? So, uh, for instance, there was a guy that I worked with when I was stationed in uh, Arizona. And he was on a deployment. He came back. He didn't want us to tell his wife because normally we tell the wives, hey, look, your husband's coming back. Meet him at the, you know, meet him at the flight line. You know, he didn't want anybody to say anything. And so he comes home and uh, he drives up. He goes upstairs or whatever and sees his wife with another guy. Right. So now in Arizona, they have the act of passion law. He could have if he had a knife on him or a gun on him or anything at that time, he could have killed the wife or the husband, you know, and it would have been like a act of insanity or whatever. But Oh, and he also got a reenlistment bonus while he was out there. So that was the main reason why he went on his deployment, you know, so that way he can get his uh, reenlistment bonus tax free. But so he files for divorce. Right. Like I said, there, there were no children involved. He files for divorce. She had like ninety thousand dollars worth of debt. He took they gave the court or the judge gave him half of her debt. Um, they also took half of his uh, reenlistment bonus and gave it to her. And he had to pay alimony. Was she working though during the marriage? Um, I don't think she was working. That's probably that's why. But still, that's kind of his. It's not that it's his fault, but that's what they set up. It so, is his fault for better for worse, right? Man, yeah, when you get into that, you got to think long term. <laughs> if if the inevitable happens, yeah, where where is this going to leave me? But I mean, she cheated on him, though. You know, so you yeah. you still think that he should provide her a lifestyle? He was providing yeah. it while they were married. Man, see, see, that's that's where I feel like that's wrong. Yeah, it is. It is. I, mean, <laughs> I just don't look at the circumstances of the divorce, and then plus he filed, so he said he wanted to divorce her. Right, right. And he was, and he had just cause. Like you know, if it, if a woman divorced a man because she walked in on him having sex with another woman, it's not, not, nobody would say, you know, well, Miss Smith, you you need to. You know, provide him monies and stuff because he like because you're divorcing him. Like you know, at that point they would say, "Well, he was in the wrong. What is it that you want?" He would have they they would hand him the play the playbook and be like, "What do you want to do?" You know, like and you know, but they don't do that when men like whether the man catches the woman cheating, whether or not she's abusive, or what have it be it be it physically or mentally. You know, a lot of the time it does wind up being uh unfair to, mm-hmm. to say the least you know because because of the way our society is set up and i think that does add to the toxic femininity uh concept because you know there are women who do think like that where they're like they're like oh well i can act this way if he divorces me he's gonna have to pay me anyway so mm-hmm. you know like it's it's you know you know, like uh, that that phrase, happy, happy wife, happy life, you know, that's that's toxic, you know, because you're both supposed to be there for each other, you know, and not just, you know, oh, one person has to do for the other. And uh, that's it. You know, that that's that's not a marriage at that point. It's it's unequal, you know, at that point. Yeah. Brandon, I saw you made a comment saying that if it's if somebody cheated, they shouldn't get anything which I totally agree, but it depends on the state, right? Um, Hawaii, for instance, is a no fault state. So it doesn't matter who did what, you're gonna split everything as reasonably as you can according to income. 
And then again, going back to toxic masculinity, women used to be denied divorces. Men could do whatever they wanted and the women could not leave that marriage. And if they did leave that marriage, they would get nothing. They could have put in 30 years taking care of him and raising his kids and she'd just be left without a penny. So hey, this, hey, y'all hey. set this up. Adrian is on fire. She is no <laughs> joke, bro. Yeah, I can understand if it's you know like back in the day when when it wasn't the norm for women to work, but I think right now where you know everything is you know everybody's equal, everybody's quote unquote equal, right? I think especially if there's no children involved, children being, children being involved is completely different. But I think when there are no children involved, if because you were with me and I'm making two hundred thousand dollars. You know, and before you got with me, you were only making, you know, twenty thousand dollars and your lifestyle changed because of what came about with being with me. When we're no longer together, I don't think you should now be entitled to continue that lifestyle because that's something you're used to. That was a benefit of being with me. You know what I mean? So and I, I think that's I think that's where I, I kind of have an issue with it, where, you know, you look at, um, for instance, like Jeff Bezos, right? Like he had to give his wife, what, sixty three billion dollars. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know her, her total involvement with the uh, with with the company, but with Amazon. But still, if it wasn't equal, where she actually put up just as much time as he did, she shouldn't be entitled to half of his money. I, that's so. That's kind of where my issue is, you know. But I guess got, Adele. Oh, go ahead. Jeff got caught with his hands in the cookie jar, though. He did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think, so it's like, you know. He knew the chance that he was taking, you know, and he figured, you know, hey, I'm worth, I'm worth the world. Is she gonna leave me, you know? And she said, yes, I will. <laughs> so that, and that's it. And well, is she entitled? Know, should she be entitled to half of his net worth? Why not? She helps him build that, and I think this is another thing that's starting to change. Like the work that women do that they don't get paid for. Who was making his meals? Who was doing? Who was washing his drawers? Like, how did he? How was he able to just focus on work and nothing else? She well, was probably I mean, in a lot of time. Okay, so if if the argument is that she clean cooked and cleaned for him, then all right, well, we set a wage for what cooking and cleaning is worth, but it's not worth sixty three billion dollars. And I'm pretty sure that <laughs> you, know, be like, hey, <laughs> you don't know what kind of detergent <laughs> they were using. <laughs> she was cooking for him. Hey, you know, hey, hey, Tim, what kind of draws he got? Watch me silk draws. <laughs> <laughs> But I see what you're saying, though, as far as like, you know, maybe her contributions to him, you know, maybe alleviating some type of stress, maybe. But even still, I think that, you know, maybe there's uh, a couple of dollars that are exchanged. But I, I don't know. I don't think half. Of, I don't think you should, you, you know, you should be you should have to forfeit half of your your net worth, what you've gained just because. And it goes both ways, because even Adele, I think just recently she got divorced and. Her husband is getting like four hundred million dollars. Her ex-husband is getting four hundred million dollars. So I don't know what his contribution was to her, but um, and the comments that I've read is like you know a lot of females were really upset with the fact that he was getting money, you know, and saying that you know it was unfair because she's the one who's singing, she's doing all the work. But I mean, hey, he was there, was fair, feet, fair, making up. Yeah, what's what's fair is fair, right? If he, if he was like you said, she was rubbing feet and you know. You know coaxing her up, hey, hey, go out there and knock out that concert, you know, and, and that's it, and she chose to be with him, so yeah. there you go. Yeah. Uh, Brandon said she deserved it, okay, I guess, I, I don't know, <laughs> we'll, we'll just disagree on that one, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of money, Brandon. <laughs> These people should know by now, get a prenup if you don't want it to hey. result in this. There yeah. you go. True, true. Yeah. All right, so we'll jump into the because we're at 58 minutes right now. So we'll jump into the last thing. Um, it's gonna be the uh, the case, the current case. I'll let um. Ooh, this gonna this gonna be a hot one. I know a a Adrian, mm -hmm. she's been on fire like all the the last two weeks on this. So this actually uh, comes by special request. Brandon asked me to. He wanted to me to do a breakdown on it and to uh, basically give my un you know unbiased opinion, I guess the best that I can, based on the um, the evidence that we have right now. So I always say in situations like this, that it's always fluid, right? There might be more evidence that's going to be presented. So I know that there are a group of people, especially a segmented population, and 
a lot of things are warranted that we have a knee jerk reaction to things based on history in this country. Right. But I, you know, I tell my cousins, I tell a lot of people that before you jump to conclusions with anything, try to really find out, you know, the details of everything. Right. Because as evidence changes, I think so should one's opinion on certain things. Okay. So um, Tim's gonna uh, play a couple of things. The first things we have, a, um, it's a short, short video. Okay. And uh, can you guys still hear me? Hey, can you, you guys still hear me or you can't hear me while this is playing? I can hear you, can you hear, can you hear me? I can hear you, can everyone else hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Go so ahead. I'll, play the, I'll play the video. About the hours and days leading up to the shooting death back in February of Ahmad Arbery, we're hearing from the man who recorded this surveillance video, believed to show Arbery walking into a home construction site shortly before the 25-year-old was shot and killed while jogging. Stay right, go ahead. Stop it. Stop using this Stop footage it. to piece together. All right. So the first thing I want to say, um, and this has not a whole lot to do with my determination and things, but I wanna talk about the initial things that we were hearing about it on Facebook and everything, right? That someone just can't go jogging. You know, someone's jogging, minding their own business and someone just runs down and they hunt him down and kill him, right? So we have some evidence here that we see him not just jogging. So the, I just wanted to address that. And that's why I always say we have to be very careful with the knee jerk reaction of just repeating things we hear, because when evidence shows something different, then we have to start backtracking on some of the things that we say. Um, can you go to the slides, Tim? Yep. So I did a little bit of digging to try to find out what in the world is going on in uh, Georgia and uh, the state laws. And one of the things Tim and I had talked about before is it would be nice to have a governmental system that we all had the same the same codes and laws across all 50 states. It's probably impossible, right? right. But um, it's something that would be great. So under in, in Georgia, the, the 2014 Georgia Code 16, uh, Title 16, this is what they define uh, under their, their uh, burglary. Um, so they establish a dwelling, meaning any building, a structure or a portion thereof, which is designed or intended for to be occupied for residential use. So right there could be problematic. It could be just uh, what, what Georgia is saying, their definition of all you have to do is commit a burglary. And it's different in California and other states because inhabited unha inhabited dwellings. So this one's saying that if it's even designed for something for residential use and you're going in, if a person commits an offense uh, of first degree burglary uh, w without authority and intends to commit a felony or theft or therein, right? Um, so go to the next slide. Right. So that's establishing what, what burglary is in the state of Georgia. So here, here's where things start to get very interesting. So when you dig up their private person, so everyone says citizens arrest, citizens arrest went away a long time ago. It's because you don't need to be a citizen to arrest someone. So it's a private person arrest now. Um, so their, 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 their state code title 17 basically defines what a person can and can't do as a private uh, person. So it says a private person may arrest an offender if the offense is committed in their presence or within immediate knowledge, if the offense is a felony and the offender is escaping or attempting to escape. So that that's very, very interesting, but it's problematic too. So go to, go to Mr. McMichael's statement. Can we pull that up, the other one? Can yeah. you make that larger? Mm -hmm. Can everybody see his statement 
of what he says, the accounts of what happened. Yes. He says that there had been several break-ins in the neighborhood and further, the suspect was caught on surveillance video and he stated he was in his front yard and saw the suspect from the break-ins hauling ass uh, down, what is that, Sat Satia Drive towards Buford Drive. All right. Quick question. How did he have him on surveillance video? So the surveillance video was caught by someone else who set up cameras because of that dwelling being built. Right. So the problem with his statement, it says that it has to be a felony committed in his presence. Right. Or he has to have immediate knowledge that a felony has been committed. That's what the law says. This isn't my opinion, right? The, the, <laughs> so the law, so he's basically saying, well, there's been break-ins in the past and we saw a guy who fit the description running down the street. The police, they're, the police debunked this because they said within the last month, there was only one call. Right. And that was the one that it was during the nighttime and it's caught on surveillance, but they can't make out who it was. So there's definitive evidence that that day, obviously you see that is Aubrey in there. I think anybody who wants to be objective sees that he's in the building, but we see that it is being constructed. There's nothing in there, even though you could still, I guess there is a theft that could be committed, right? And so that's go after to my next fact, right? He wasn't viewing this video while it was occurring. Exactly. You have to have a knowledge of a felony that had been committed or had just been committed. So go well, to so my next I, slide. Can I, can I ask one thing real quick? Go ahead. So, all right, now um, we're saying that this is, a, you're saying it's a construction site. Is that what you're claiming it to be? Or, because I thought it was well, different. Look, if, it's a, if it's a residential area, uh, if it's a resident, sorry, and a residence that's being rehabbed doesn't matter. It's still a residence, right? So I think that's where it kind of changes, right? The laws. Well, it's a, it is a, it's a home. That's that's why I went over the state law, which which says that by definition, it's it's giving you the elements of what a burglary is. So I'm agreeing mm -hmm. with you. However, the problem is, look what it says that you you are as a private as a private citizen, not a police officer. It says that you can only make a private person's arrest if the felony has been committed in your presence or you have knowledge right. of this felony being committed. He's so, saying, so based on his statement, he's mm -hmm. saying, oh, I seen a guy running down the street who fit the description of someone who committed a felony in the past. Really? I thought he said he's. I thought he yeah. said he saw right. the guy coming out. He said he saw the guy coming out of the house, right? He said he just no. He it's says he's just uh, hauling ass down the street. He just said he if you go back, back to up. a statement, it says that they just saw him running down the street, and he fits the description. Said it was in his front yard. I saw him uh, from the break in. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Got you. All right. So that's why this is getting problematic. So go to my next slide. Again. So this is what in the state of, and I keep wanting to say Arizona, cause I guess I'm taking, so for those of you guys who don't know me, I'm in a master's of legal studies program right now at a Sandra Day O'Connor School of Law at ASU. So that's why I keep wanting to say Arizona law cause they teach a lot of Arizona law cases. So under Georgia law, this is what it says that a civilian is bound to for justifiable use of force. It says that you can use force when you reasonably believe that that uh, that force is necessary to protect yourself or a third party against another person of imminent use of unlawful force. It's similar here in California. If I protecting myself or someone else for great bodily in, uh, injury, I have to believe that I, my my life is in danger or someone else's life is in danger. Right? I mean, this is basically what this is saying. Um, and I'm gonna skip down to the bottom. You may use deadly force if you reasonably believe that such force is necessary to prevent death or great bodily injury to you or another person to prevent a com commission of a forcible felony. Think back of his statement. So his statement mm -hmm. is problematic to the, the, this, this whole case. Let's go to the next one. He was running away, so there was no threat. So, let's go to the next slide. All right. So. This is what they say, you can't use force. If you are the initial aggressor, you cannot use deadly force on someone else. That's what they say in the state of Georgia. 
or you have just committed or attempted to commit a crime and you're trying to and you're trying to leave and you committed a felony. Again, problematic for these guys who are saying they are enacting um, this arrest. All right, next slide. Right. So I am a big case law guy. I don't like to just regurgitate my opinion. So this is case law. This is a Supreme Court decision on Tennessee versus Garner. Um, I've read this so many times that I'm just going to summarize it. Basically, in Memphis, the police, the police. So remember, they're in uniform and they have sworn authority to uphold the law, right? We're all in agreement. Even if we don't agree with everything the police do, they have authority to uphold the law, correct? They are in a marked patrol car and they're in uniform. They go to a burglary that is in progress. They get there, they go in the house, they hear somebody running out of the house. When they go to the backyard, they see Garner run to the back, they see him run by a fence, they put a flashlight on him and they see he is not armed. They notice he's not armed, doesn't look like he has anything. As he starts to climb over the fence, they shoot and kill him. Shoot and kill him. This is 1985, right? So keep in mind, this these are police officers who at the time before this case, there was a, I'm sure you guys have heard of a fleeing felon law, right? There, there's a fleeing felon law. So this changed a lot of stuff. Go next slide. So the court ruled that under the Fourth Amendment, that police officers may not use deadly force against a fleeing unarmed suspect. The fact that the suspect does not respond to commands or halts to their authority does not give the police officers the authority to shoot. Why is this so important? Because we have two sworn police officers who are in uniform, who responded to an actual burglary that they saw. They saw the guy run through the house. So remember the crime says we can act on a felony that is committed in our presence. We can also as police officers act on a misdemeanor that's committed in our presence and some misdemeanors that are not. We, don't, we can act on felonies that are committed outside of our, our presence if we believe the felony actually occurred. Extremely important, next slide. I think that's the last one. Is that is that the last one? Yeah, there's only six. Well, there's supposed to be more. Okay, so um, what the problem with this is establishes when these guys are saying self defense and that they were making a citizen's arrest. Where I'm struggling, where I'm struggling with the whole thing with the law. There is we have case law that shows that police officers cannot shoot a fleeing felon with the exception i'm going to give you an example and tim we talked about this before if somebody is a serial killer if we know that it jeffrey dahmer or ted bundy it who's killed 15 people is fleeing and we allow him to escape we know for sure that he's going to kill more people so it's justified for me to shoot ted bundy in the back to prevent him from getting away even if he is not armed because we know that he has shown a propensity for violence that he's killed people in the past. That, that's not the same circumstance. So Tennessee versus Garner, Garner establishes what law enforcement can't do. So my question is, how do two people take it upon themselves to try to enforce a citizen's arrest based on knowledge that they don't even have? And that's what's gonna be problematic. So there are some other things that people brought up because we know that the DA's office didn't pick up the case. Um, so the DA's office, from what I found out, initially didn't pick up the case because this guy, not only was he a retired cop, he retired from that same DA's office. So I understand that the DA says that's a conflict of interest. We can't, we can't go up against a guy that used to work for us, but what the DA's office is supposed to do is assign a different prosecutor to them. They're under investigation right now by the state attorney because they didn't do that. So that right there just looks shady. 
they forwarded it to some police department and the police department, I don't know if I'm really mad and I know that some people may be upset with what I say. If the police, the cops didn't file charges initially, just think that Arbery's dead. So he, he can't give his statement to what happened. There's no video at the time that we know of, right? We don't know of any video that surfaced at the time. So he's listening, they're listening to two people's statements of what happened. So they dismissed the case due to lack of sufficient evidence. Didn't they uh, also lie the video to show. the mother though? They told them that her son was killed um, committing a crime? Yeah, because I'm assuming that they're probably repeating what the two uh, guys are telling them based on their eyewitness testimony. Right, but they didn't that even investigate sense. and they know they, where the body was found. So that's yeah. a cover up. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's problematic. So I, I'm, I guess a couple of things I wanted to tackle for one, especially th those of us are um, in the black community. There are some things that we need to slow down on. Like, I, and people get mad at me all the time because I'm extremely, I'm fact driven. I'm not so emotional. So, so when I saw everybody changing their Facebook profiles and all, and people saying, oh, he was just jogging, you know, minding his own business. And, you know, I just said, you know, there's probably a lot more to than that. And lo and behold, there are some things that surface. But when I look at that and I put myself in a position and you guys even heard me talk about my situation where I chased the guy who was armed, who had just fired off some shots. But because he was running from me, I did not feel that I could be justified as taking that man's life. Here is a man who was armed, who had just fired a gun, and I still didn't feel that I was justified taking his life. So I can't understand how some guys who assume something happened can just go jump on someone and and kind of force him. So I when I look at that video, I, I you know, if we all put ourselves in that situation, how many of us really are going to be compliant to two guys that block us in the roadway with a shotgun and are telling us no, you're going to stay here or 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 something else? I think 9 out of 10 times that goes bad because people are going to do one or two things. And this is statistically proven. They're either going to fight, it's fight or flight. That's the only thing that people are going to do. So they always say, if you pull a gun, you got to be, two things are going to happen. Someone's either going to fight you or they're going to cower down. And it looks like in this instance, he didn't cower down and he wind up losing his life. So I'll let uh, start off with you, Adrian, and any comments you got on it. Yeah, so um, you say that, let me make sure I have this correctly, that you don't really have a problem so much with the police department itself. I don't have a problem initially because I don't know what information that the law that they, that they were given. So we know that there was a crime scene, right? So the crime scene would have been where he was shot because okay. they just said, Hey, there's, I mean, it's just crazy. Even me thinking about this, there's a guy running down the street who fits the description of someone who burglarized in the past. So it's different if maybe, uh, God forbid, you know, it's, it, you know, it happened right there. Now we have a crime scene. We could pull video. Hey, there's video in this building of him being there and everything's right there. So I'm saying I'm not letting the police off. I'm not letting them off the hook. Maybe they didn't do a thorough investigation, but I'm looking at maybe that the information that they had. And I don't know the technology that they have in Georgia, because what I'm finding out, too, that. Those of us who are here in California, even if we complain about the police, we're kind of spoiled because I'm going to tell you the training that California cops get in comparison to police departments in other states, it's crazy. They, they, I don't even think that some of these states should have police officers because they lack so much training. We go through mandatory training every year. Like it's, it's sickening how much training I go through. And there are a lot of other agencies that don't do that. And I believe California has the highest incident of police involved shootings, right? Even with all that I training. I don't know, but we probably should because we have the highest population of people out of all 50 states. So that makes sense to me. Yeah. So the reason why I ask you about the police department specifically is because, I mean, they didn't do their due diligence in the investigation, it seems like, especially if they just accepted the statement and then didn't follow up to investigate the crime scene. Because just going to the crime scene itself, they would have seen that what happened at the crime scene and the statement that they were given, something didn't match there. 
how did they get so far away from wherever <laughs> they initially observed this phantom crime occurring to where it ended up in this man who's unarmed being shot? So well, b well, based on the information, I mean, just look at this the 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 little bit of information we had until the story the story started developing more, right? So you have two guys that are going to give their statement. Hey. We saw a guy running down the street. I mean, that was the actual guy's statement that, that was highlighted on the screen. Yeah. Hey, we just saw a guy running down the street. So the police are going, okay, well, this guy, they're saying that he was committing burglaries in the past. And they obviously they did probably a shitty investigation. And they're taking two statements, even though I I have heard that there were other people who called 911. And I would assume that there are probably more people calling 911 because people were hop, these guys were hopping in their cars with guns going after someone. So people were probably like, oh, oh you know, something's about to go bad. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's a mess. In my personal opinion, I don't think, I, I don't see how it was justified at all, especially yeah. when it, it was suspect to me before I saw everything, the totality of everything. And I'm gonna even say, but maybe it isn't the totality of everything, but based on the, the guy's in an uninhabited dwelling. If you wanna say, okay, he was in there, it's a burglary, but we just read the laws. And the laws are very specific that you have to have knowledge. And this was a former cop, so he knew the law. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's extremely problematic. Go ahead, Chris. I was saying he should have known the law. Yeah. And he knew what he could get away with mm -hmm. if he if he told his former cohorts. Yeah, it, 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 it's sad, Tim. I don't know if you got anything you want to add or. Um, well, like I said, I don't really know much about the case. I mean, you you give me more information here than I've received the whole time. I really haven't put too much energy into the case. Not that I don't think it's important or anything like that. Um, but I just think that you know. I don't think you should. I don't think anybody should jump to any conclusions until they have all the information. Um, that's really all I can say. I, I extreme. I'll admit ignorance to this whole case. So I don't want to say anything and, and add to that ignorance because <laughs> <laughs> I can say I don't know. Look, Adrian, see Adrian's face. She ain't playing. It, it looks. You know what? As, as a former yeah. uh, retired law enforcement, it looks bad, and that's why you know I saw that video of that other police officer. And I don't know if you guys have seen that um, that video. And I told Tim, as soon as I saw it, I just, I started seeing problems with what he said because I for, the first thing I thought is, well, what is case law? Because case law supersedes all this other stuff. So we have mm -hmm. a precedence that we have uniform police officers who are bound. Think of that, that me in uniform if I shoot someone who has actually committed a crime and they're fleeing a burglary and it's bad and I have knowledge of them committing a crime, how do two Joes who right. are retired and really someone when they throw out retired, that doesn't mean anything. I'm retired too, but I can't go out to Vaughn's and if I try to apprehend Tim and Tim, as big as he is, starts to try to resist me and I go, well, I'm a retired cop and Tim puts me on my ass and then I can't shoot him. Right? <laughs> that's, that's my thing. This, this involved a shooting of a guy and none of the laws that you presented authorized anything about a shooting, okay? Arrest, that does not mean you get to shoot someone dead. Yeah, exactly. And wasn't, the, wasn't it the situation where like, the cops were about to arrest them right there and then the initial DA told them not to? Like, am I wrong with that? Is that just hearsay? From what I read, I found, I read an argument, uh, I'm sorry, article that the DA, it was a she, didn't mm -hmm. even want there. She's like, nope, I can't take this because it's a conflict because he worked for us. Right. He was a former right. DA investigator, but where she fails is it is mm -hmm. her duty to assign a different prosecutor. So say for example, mm -hmm. me as a working police officer, if I, if I committed a crazy crime in the city of Riverside, which I worked, right? Mm -hmm. What could happen is because it happened in the city that I work for, that our department could say, well, wait a minute. Okay, because this is one of our employees, we're gonna let the sheriff's department handle this investigation since they're over the entire county. 
That's the proper mm-hmm. way. So we don't show any, for one, it shows more objectivity, right? Even though right. I know everybody will roll their eyes when they say, okay, when cops go to trial, there's no objectivity. But at least it, it looks better where, because if I get in trouble and my own department is investigating, everybody's going to be like, okay, let's see. How likely is he to be found guilty by his own department? So we usually let another department step in and handle a right. major investigation so there's no conflict of interest. And she right. failed She failed to do that. And it sounds like they pawned it off to some other PD who kind of just took some minor investigative stuff and didn't file. So, yeah, so he, are you, he did so, the same thing. He, he provided a defense for them. And then and then said he couldn't do it because of conflict of interest, you know, after providing a defense for them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, initially he wrote out the defense, put it out into the atmosphere, and then said, Yeah, I can't take it either. And then the third DA that looked at it took like how many, like 72 hours to, to do anything? Like it it was like a while. Like I, I honestly think the only reason why these guys got arrested. And so that they wouldn't get killed. Like that's that's my mm-hmm. belief. I wonder, you know? I, I think there was a lot of pressure once mm-hmm. the video, I think honestly, and this is just my personal, I mean, obviously I'm speculating. I, I have no idea for knowing for sure that mm-hmm. I think if no video surfaces, may, that maybe this whole thing, I mean, it goes away it's because it's it, 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 when it becomes hearsay, I mean, mm-hmm. and they, you know, you always hear people say, man, you know, I, I feel for his family and may his soul rest in peace. What do they always say? Dead people make terrible witnesses. Exactly. And, exactly. You know, and that's true. And like Tim said, you know, it, it, it's sad all the way around. You know, I just wish, especially someone who is former law enforcement, still, obviously, I, you know, I still do things within law enforcement. I There's frustration on my part because people look at this situation and then someone like Adrian, who has been passionate, trust me, I've been following her stuff who's passionate mm-hmm. about it, you know, looks at someone like me and says, well, she said how you guys are, you know, just like, you know, like she's like, well, you guys shoot more people in California. And you see, I go, well, it makes sense because we got the most people. <laughs> so, let me ask you this to, to say, so are you, are you implying that, um, that this was police corruption and that the police covered this up and intentionally covered it up? Prove that. That's why I'm saying this is my opinion. My opinion is mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. hers. I can tell you from someone who has done a lot of investigations. I was mm-hmm. never a homicide investigator, but I have helped on homicide scenes. So, okay. I mean, because we have homicide detectives because they don't want anybody messing. That's all they do. That's their specialty. But mm-hmm. when we respond, at, if we're on a, a special enforcement team or just patrol officers, if I respond to a scene of a homicide, I do the preliminary investigation. I don't wait. We can't wait till detectives get there because we're establishing a crime scene. We're we're the first thing like Adrian said, I'm looking for video, multiple statements. We knock on everybody's door on the entire street, even on both sides. I mean, mm-hmm. we get if you looked at some of our supplemental reports on, on our police reports, just on I mean, and when we go to court on these, the attorneys call us a court. Hey, so tell us what you heard or whatever. You might be on the stand for five minutes. So that's why I say I don't. I can't say how terrible they are in in mm-hmm. other states or Georgia, but I can tell you that doesn't sound like a thorough investigation. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously there was video. Why couldn't they have backtracked and went into that vacant uh, building and looked up and saw that there were cameras in there and then mm-hmm. go, okay, we have cameras. Now let's see if we can get a hold of the homeowner and see if we get any video footage. I mean, that that's what we do. We go around, yeah. We get, you know, we ask for video and people are like, hey, I have cameras. We, you know, I've been in people's houses at two, at two three o'clock in the morning. Them downloading video footage of, of things for our investigation. So I, I, I think it's a horrible investigation on their part. I can't so a, prove, I can't prove police corruption, but I, yeah. I guess I could prove a terrible investigation. Okay. So you're saying bad investigation, not really, not intentional, but just poor policing, I guess is what you're saying? Maybe it wasn't, you know, maybe it wasn't a big deal to them. You know, Mm -hmm. I can't, it's hard for me. And it's like the whole thing, you know, a lot of people in our community will say, you know, this was based on race, right? 
especially when you put, it was in Georgia, the South, you know, when we put all that together, I could say that, I mean, it's possible, right? It's, it's very possible that race played a part in that. Mm -hmm. But for me to say, I know for sure, I mean, I would have to wait for more, right? Sometimes people, they, you know, they, they shit on their own tongue, right? Maybe this mm -hmm. guy gets on the stand and when he's being, when he's being drilled by the prosecutor, he says something to incriminate himself. Kind of like you, you guys are all, old, we're all old enough to know about what, you know, Mark Furman, right? When, how, when really the whole OJ Simpson trial, if people don't understand it, it, it hung on credibility of Mark Furman. And once he said, oh, he had never used that word, <laughs> it, it, it went all bad for, for them. So, you know, maybe this guy incriminates himself or maybe the DA's office finds something else um, that he's been involved in. Because when I was skimming through, there are a lot of articles, I think that him and his son, I think they were involved in something else. So that's why I'm saying, my opinion may change more on a lot of this when more evidence starts to present itself. Cause it seems like there's a lot more stuff out there that these guys may have been involved in, in their past. Yeah. All right. Well, we're at an hour and 30. So uh, we we'll have to do this closing statement. We've, we've kind of gone over the normal time that we normally run this for. So um, yeah. So in closing statements, uh, Chris, you got anything you want to add um, just overall? Overall, <clears throat> honestly, I just want to say thank you to all of you for having me on this. This was really fun, you right. know, and I really enjoyed uh, talking to you all about this as far as uh, with uh, this uh, Ahmad's uh, case. I think that there's, there's, there's too much dirt out there for for there not to be something that comes out of this and like, like uh, Cedric said there's going to be something that comes up especially when he's being drilled by the prosecutor or whatever if the prosecutor doesn't drill him or for whatever reason something else bad happens I I'm afraid of, of what's going to happen if no actual justice comes of this you know mm. because it, it just seems too too wrong. I mean, even being in the military, we, we have to go through low act trading right before we get deployed and we can't even shoot at people like that. So for you to chase somebody down and, and kill him in the middle of the street and then turn around and say, oh, well, we thought he might have looked like somebody that that doesn't make sense to me, you know, um, but we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but uh, Adrian, Cedric, Tim. Thanks for having me. I truly appreciate it. I got to run. All right. It's a calling. So. All right. Yeah. Pleasure, man. Yeah. All right. Cool. Adrian, uh, you got anything you want to add? Closing yeah. statements? No, it was a good conversation, fellas. Uh, just kind of continuing from last week and some this week, getting the male perspective on relationships. I, I value your guys' opinions. It's not enough times that we can kind of sit down in a non-hostile environment with females and males and kind of talk about our opinions, even when they are drastically different. Um, right. But it's 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 good. Let's continue the conversation. Um, definitely enjoy it, Cedric, you bring in your background and perspective on the case law and what the Georgia law says. I'm emotional, but is I'd like to have that. Here's what the law states as well, because I wanna see this case bear out in court and I wanna see justice served. So having that law there is gonna be important. Yeah, I, th I thought it was important. I said, Brandon, you know, that's that's been the hot potato. And, you know, Brandon was like, hey, you know what? Talk about that. I think, it, you know, a lot of people want to hear. And then, you know, I, I try to be fairly, you know, fairly objective. Uh, you know, I try not to take a side. And it, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, that does anger some people. I'm just not, you know, try to be so reactive. And that's why I started out the, the, the video. My, my whole thing, because I know when people probably saw the video at first, people probably thought I was going to have a different, and maybe even you thought that I was even going to have a different conclusion at the end. But the reason why I showed that video first is to show that we need to stop jumping on the bandwagon about information. We need to stop, uh, Tim and I were talking about this earlier, Sean King and and rappers, and, and as much as I like LeBron James and some of these other people, not to throw his name out there, we need to be careful of the sources of uh, who, our sources of information. 
And the best thing, what I try to do in a lot of stuff, especially if something's even gone to court, you know, there have been a couple of things. I just go find the actual court documents and, and read up on the actual court case. And it's funny when you hear someone else tell you about something and the court documents are totally different. So, you know, I know I was a little long winded. Thank you for everything. But I just, <laughs> I guess um, I would say that we all, everybody's listening. Instead of jumping the gun, do do research. I think that's where a lot of us fail. I know Tim, Tim's very analytical, myself too. Um, that just, you know, my background and how my mind works. I like to dig up facts of everything first before I start making conclusions. So thank you, Adrian. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it. definitely. Definitely a pleasure. Yep. And the last thing I would say is just, um, yeah, I mean, even even looking in, looking into facts and everything like that, I mean, there's always going to be a bias. Everybody has a bias. So it's just trying to trying to, you know, use discernment and figure out what is biased and what is actually, you know, factual. And then then it's whatever you can prove in court, you know. So that's why I kind of I'm kind of standoffish from the whole case, because I don't I'm not researching. I'm not uh, out there looking at the evidence or anything like that. So I don't want to jump to a conclusion. And then, you know, based on, on, on you know, certain things that I've seen. So, yeah. But all right, guys. Well, it's definitely uh, been a pleasure. And yeah. Uh, same time again. next week, same bat channel. God bless. Yep. All right. All right. Me and this. There we go.